Your patients and families can use PCC's Patient Portal to see their medical records, lab results, read handouts, get their IMSS record, pay their bill, and more, all on their mobile device 24-7. In this video, I'll show you how to sign families up for the Patient Portal, how to manage privacy, how to view and respond to portal messages, everything you need to get started with the portal at your practice. First off, what do patients or their guardians see when they use the patient portal? When they log in, they see one or more patients on their portal account, upcoming appointments, and depending on practice configuration, they can send and receive messages or see their balance and pay their bill. When they select a patient, they'll see that patient's upcoming appointments again, along with visit histories, medical information, growth charts, immunizations, labs, and more. They can drill down further too. Select a visit, and they'll get details for that visit, for example. So how do you get mom and dad or the teenage patient signed up for the patient portal? Now, there are different times you might do this, but I'm gonna pick the easiest. PCC recommends you get every parent signed up for the patient portal when they're standing in front of you at the check-in desk. So when I click on the visit status to check in a patient, I've got a component right here in my patient check-in protocol called patient portal users. So for this patient, I can see no portal users. I want to add mom or dad right now. So I click add portal user. Individual patient portal accounts are based on a unique email address. Uh, the name can be anything, it's the unique email that identifies the portal user. PCC EHR knows I was creating this user to look at Pebbles Flintstones records, so this patient is added right here. I can add additional patients or siblings right over here by clicking one of these buttons. Next, I'm going to indicate whether this patient portal user, mom, represents a PCC billing account. Yes, mom pays the bills, so I'll select the billing account. Most of the time, you'll see just one option here, representing the billing account that's already linked to the patients that you added. However, for a patient with more than one household, or if this is a teenage patient, etc., you'll want to slow down and make a careful choice here. Should the patient portal user you're signing up have access to account balance information for paying bills, that kind of thing? Yes? Okay, then I make the appropriate selection right here. While I'm setting up mom's account, I always note the URL down here. Uh, this is the web address that parents use to access the portal. Uh, they can do it on their smartphone, their iPad, or just their personal computer. Uh, be sure to share it with them before they leave. Uh, create a cool poster or a handout with this URL for your family or get your practice's homepage website updated with a link right to this address. By the way, up here, this is their temporary password. Now you can share it with them or print it out by clicking the print password button over here, but you don't actually need to. As soon as you save and register this portal user, they receive a confirmation email with the portal URL and their temporary password. They'll be prompted to enter a new password the first time they log in. So that's it. I'm going to click close, and I can see that the parent is now ready to use the patient portal. I recommend you get them to log in right here in the office. Help them get started. Uh, if you're a bit nerdy, you can even show them how to bookmark the link and make it an icon right on their phone's home screen. Okay, here in patient check-in, I can see this patient I'm checking in has one portal user. Maybe I could add dad, too. Maybe I'll add the patient so they can have access to their own portal account. This patient's 16 years old, after all. Okay, I'll do that quickly right now. Pebbles Flintstone has access to Pebbles Flintstone's portal information. And now I can see there are two portal users who can look up information for Pebbles. Okay, so patient check-in isn't the only place to manage portal accounts. Maybe you do it on the phone, maybe you do it during a visit. I can get to the Patient Portal Administration tool anytime right up here in the Tools menu. And if I open a patient's chart, my practice keeps that same Patient Portal Users component here on the demographic section of the chart. And we've actually added this same component to some of our chart notes. 
We have special new patient chart notes, which has this component right on it, so we always, always get parents on the portal. Let's talk about privacy. Patient portal access is through a secure website. It's password protected. The portal keeps a secure log showing access. But there's another kind of security everyone at your practice should think about. If this patient comes in for a pregnancy test or is concerned about an STD or needs counseling or they just don't want their parents tracking their weight anymore, how do you control portal access in those situations? I'm going to show you three important tools for that. Everyone in your practice needs to know about these tools. Emancipation age, the privacy lock feature, and blocking a user. First off, inside PCCEHR, your practice has a default emancipation age. Maybe it's 14, maybe it's 18. You have a practice-wide policy. At our practice, it's 16 years old now, and at that age, a patient's portal access becomes private. When you've set that age, automatically on the patient's birthday, account access is blocked for mom and dad. They'll see their teenage kid's name, and they'll be able to send messages to the nurse and doctor, but they will no longer have access to the patient's records. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this every day. For example, this teenager has their own patient portal account. They access the patient portal on their phone. They shouldn't be blocked, right? And special needs patients or other circumstances might mean that a parent or guardian continues to access the account for their kids. Of course, your practice gets to make that decision. When I manage a portal user, I see some controls for this right here on the list of patients. So I'm editing mom right now. Up there is Pebbles Flintstone, and it shows that this record will be hidden at age 16. I can click right here, and now she will have access after this patient turns 16, which I can always tell whenever I see the patient portal user's component. Okay, I'll pop open the teenage patient's account, make sure she has access to her records too. Okay, that's the first tool, emancipation age settings and the ability to override them. Next, let's look at the privacy lock. Let's say I'm looking at a patient's problem list. If a diagnosis should be private, I can control that. With the lock button right here. What does that lock mean? It means this item won't appear on patient-facing reports. Uh, the patient visit summary, that's the report you probably print out at the end of the visit, and it won't appear in the patient portal either. You've got the same ability on orders. Let's do that pregnancy test. Look at that. My practice decided to give that order the lock by default. We set it up so I don't even have to click. When I see that lock, I know that's an order that won't be visible on the patient portal. It might be on the EOB, we can't control that, but we can set it for orders in PCCEHR. How do I adjust this on any order? I can click Edit and use this Include on Patient Reports checkbox to make the lock appear or disappear. The phrase patient reports means patient and family facing stuff, the patient visit summary report and the patient portal. Okay, these tools are great, but obviously your practice has to talk about this, figure out how you want to use these tools and what other steps you need to take to ensure patient privacy. Remember that if there's ever a concern, you can deactivate a user's portal access in seconds. Just click manage portal user and click Remove to remove that patient from this user's access list. Okay, when a parent sends you a question, where does it show up and how do you answer it? First, I'll pretend I'm dad. Here I am in the portal. I'm going to make a new message. Hmm, what kind of message am I sending? If I need a form filled out by my pediatrician, the portal message has a template. I just answer the questions and then send them to the practice. Cool. But let's say it's not a standard question. I'll pick Other. And enter a subject and a message for my pediatrician.
You'll notice that mom or dad could attach a photo or a PDF to the message. They could send a camp form they needed signed or a picture of a rash, for example. And then the family clicks send. Now my practice is going to see those incoming messages on the messaging queue. I can filter this queue just like all PCC EHR queues. Maybe it's my job today to monitor and respond to all incoming portal messages. I could set that with the task filter right down here. Here's the message I just created as dad. I'll double click on the message and I can work on it right here. Now if they used one of those templates like the form or a refill request, I'd see all of their answers nicely laid out here for me. In this case, I'll type a reply to the message and keep the conversation right here in the patient's chart. This portal message will be logged in the visit history with all of a patient's encounters. I can respond to the message. And I could create a task if that's suitable, uh, something for anyone else at my practice to follow up on later if a scheduler needed to call them, for example. Message threads can go back and forth. If this were the end and I didn't need this reply, I could just click No Reply to end the thread, but I'm going to send this back to Dad. Okay, everything on this portal message is complete. It won't be on my messaging queue anymore. Now, if Dad replies again, the message will reappear on the messaging queue, just like an email conversation, except the whole conversation is right here, along with any work we did in response. Okay, let's say I want to send a family member a portal message. I'll click Add Portal Message. This function is also in the Edit menu. Now, maybe mom or dad or even the patient themselves has a portal account, so I pick who the message is for. And I type my message. Now this time, I'm going to send them educational materials. I could send lab results or any document from their chart. I click the Add Attachment button and find the document I need to send them. The document will be attached to the message. And by the way, you can make any document visible to all portal users, part of the patient's portal record, too. Whenever you're viewing a document, I'll view this one. You can edit it and control whether portal users can see it right here with the Display in Portal Documents checkbox. Uh, the Document Viewer even has a handy Add to Portal Message button, so if I'm looking at a document I need, I can create a new portal message right from here. Great, okay, I'll click Send to send this portal message. One more tip, whenever you send a portal message or reply to one, the portal user, usually mom or dad, will get an email telling them there's a portal message waiting for them. The email has no private health information, it just prompts them to open up the portal. Your practice may decide you don't want growth charts in the portal, or you don't want labs and lab tests in the portal, or you don't want to display account balances. Your practice can control all of that in the configuration menu with the patient portal configuration tool. Talk to your client advocate. They can walk you through the options here anytime. Uh, you may make a different decision down the road after you've had the portal up and running for a while. I will point out one configuration option right up here, that emancipation age. Uh, different states actually have different laws about this, and as I mentioned, your practice can have its own policy about this, too. Okay, that's just a quick overview on how to use the patient portal. I'll conclude with two quick things to check out on your own. First, if you look here under the Reports menu, the Report Library has reports that can help you with the portal, like a list of today's patients, along with who isn't on the portal yet, things like that. Next, we add new features to the patient portal all the time. You can learn about those features and read a complete written manual to everything you just saw in this video at learn.pcc.com. And as always, remember, your PCC client advocate can help you out with configuration, training, whatever you need. They're experts on this tool, and it's all included with your PCC subscription. Thanks for watching.